there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and we got a lot to do today. We're gonna make a card, we're gonna do some coloring with colored pencils, we got some messy stuff we're gonna do too, but uh, first I just wanna show you the image that we'll be coloring. It is a rubber stamp by Art Neko. It is the Rhode Island State Flower, Violets, and Bird which is a Rhode Island, it's supposed to be a Rhode Island red chicken, but I didn't realize that when I colored it, which is ironic because I have Rhode Island red chickens, but uh, so I made it a little bit lighter to stand out against the background. But anyway, it's a gorgeous stamp and it came from a the uh, 50 State Birds stamp from um, Art Neko. And this is how they come. They come in big sheets like this. And so I think there's like nine sheets in this set, um, lots of images. And this is how, maybe there's not nine, maybe there's six. I don't know, there's a lot. There's over 50 ATC sized stamps. And so I didn't want to risk losing any of these stamps. So this is how I stamp these images. Um, I'm gonna use archival ink. You could use anything really that is um, compatible with your um, your coloring medium. And oh, here's my ink pad right here. Hell, it's stalling for time. Did you catch that? I was like, oh, let me, how much can I talk until I find that ink pad? Oh, I've had too much coffee today. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to the beach. All right, so what I do is I just kind of ink up that area on the plate, and then I take a little piece of cardstock I've already cut. This is the 110 pound recollection cream cardstock, and I really like that cardstock. I am definitely gonna buy more when I run out. Hopefully I have enough to get me by to the stamp show next year. Okay, and then I put a just a scrap of paper. This is a piece of deli paper. I put that right on top and just kind of run my hands over it. These are really deep etched rubber stamps and they're high quality and they, um, they're they beautiful. So I know I'm gonna get a good impression. And um, so I don't waste any cardstock and I don't have to cut apart my plate of images. Now this wouldn't be really useful if it was like a set of alphabet stamps or something that you would want to be able to layer. But for just doing um, an image like that, it's ideal. Look how crisp and nice that image is. And uh, I'll put a link below to this. And a uh, little secret here, if you check out my blog, the link is below, I'll be giving away that stamp on my blog and a gift certificate to artneko.com. So you're gonna wanna check that out. I feel like I'm yelling, I apologize. All right, so we're gonna do the background. What I did was I took um, the Starburst embossed, uh, embossing folder, embossed some more of that recollections cardstock. I think it's a Tim Holtz embossing folder, I'm pretty sure. And um, what I'm gonna do is ink it up. I've got some distress inks here and I am going to just kind of give it some of this wild honey. And I haven't actually really decided exactly what I want to do for color, so I have a few here. A little bit with this blue up here. I guess I kind of want like a sunrise, since I have a rooster. And I'm not worried about a mess. Don't worry about that. That's why I have this piece of deli paper down, protecting things. All right, so I've kind of got this, uh, that's kind of pretty just the way it is. And I'm gonna spritz that with some water. Let those colors do their thing. And then I've got this uh, gel stick. Uh, you can use a gelato. Wouldn't be fancy. I'm just using this gel stick here. Add some metallics to everything. And then I'm just gonna use a uh, tissue or baby wipe. I think I got a baby wipe right here. This will work just fine. And I'm just gonna rub it all in there. So I have a really kind of um, colorful yet subdued and muted background. I just think that will be kind of nice. So depending on how you tip it, you're going to get either more color or more sheen, which I think is kind of fun. And because I don't like to waste anything because I'm a miser here, I'm actually going to pick up some of the extra ink that's on my deli paper and kind of stick it in there. Just kind of use my finger. Do a little finger painting here, folks. Finger painting. And then this will plenty of time to dry as we color our beautiful image. So there's our background piece. And uh, we're gonna use just a uh, half a sheet of car craft cardstock folded in half to make our card base. And I think that was Recollections brand too. I have to say, I'm kind of impressed with the Recollections brand at Michael's. Maybe it's just cause I don't have Michael's nearby. So I only go once a year. So everything's just <laughs> so, so exciting. Oh my gosh, exciting. I don't get out much. All right, so now we're gonna zoom in a bit and uh, we're gonna do some coloring and I want you to be able to see the details. So what I'll have here, what I'll do is I'll put my finished colored finished colored item there. And I'll put the plain one next to it that I stamped yesterday so I know it's nice and dry. And I'm actually gonna put a piece of wood underneath there because I wanna have a firm surface to color on. This is actually the lid of my uh, color pencil box that I use for my Prismacolor pencils, but I'm actually using Spectrum Noir today. And I've got them all right here in this jar. And I've got this little sandpaper thingamabob and some little blending stumps if we decide we wanna use those. But 
I'm just gonna do some basic coloring. I'm gonna start with um, a kind of like, it's uh, it's 68 with a Spectrum Noir. I think it's really close to a Copenhagen Blue if you're using Prismas. It's this um, slightly cerulean green based blue. It's kind of a neutral blue, but I would say it leaned maybe a little bit more towards green than purple. And I'm just starting up at the top and I'm fading it down. I'm using less pressure as I work my way down in the sky area. I've got some clouds over here, which is kind of kind of cool. Then I'm going to go in with this lighter blue. It is uh, 065 in Spectrum Noir. It's kind of like a light sky blue, and I'm coloring in with that. And now I'm actually going to take some of this color. I'm going to try to be careful to leave the border clean on the outside, but if not, I can use a little kneaded eraser to clean it up. I'm going to give a little bit of color on the bottom of these clouds, just like that right now and I'm going up I'm gonna go up over the sky with this as well and I think I'm gonna put a little bit more of that darker blue in we're gonna be blending this with uh, with Gamsol actually I um, I just got the blending solution for these cuz I was curious and I have to say I really like it it is Gamsol it even says it right on the thing that uh, it's made by um, by Gamblin Art Supply, Art Products, uh, but that's just what the Spectrum Noir blending solution is if you're curious, and there's absolutely no odor. It smells like water. It's crazy. I can't believe it. Uh, can't believe it's not butter. Can't believe it's not water. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do a little, I'm like, I think I'm going to put the road in now, and I've got this uh, this 104. It's kind of like a chocolate brown. It's, I would say, it's a very neutral brown. It's not really that warm. It's quite a dark brown, and I'm going to put some shadows under the rooster here which is supposed to be a Rhode Island Red, but we're not going to color it like a Rhode Well, you could color it like a Rhode Island Red. I'm not going to color it like a Rhode Island Red because I want it to stand out a little bit more. I don't know what kind of chicken it is. Some other kind. And I'm going to use some of this lighter brown in here. It's more of like a burnt sienna color. It's uh, 094 if you're using the Spectrum Noirs. I kind of, I think I'm going to rearrange. They're in their tins right now that they came in. But I have to say, I don't really care for them arranged like that. I'd rather have them all in jars or something so I could see them a little bit better. I don't like having to open up a bunch of tins when I go to color. I have a problem with that. If you if you know me in real life, you know I take things out of their original packaging pretty darn quickly after getting them, and then I mix them all up and put them however they fit me. I take lids off things. I'm, I'm a mess. All right, I'm just adding a little bit of this kind of like yellowy ochre color. It's 087 right in there. And while I'm at it, I think I'm going to add some under the bird on the chest. This is like the shadow and under the wing. Eh, that's good enough. And I think that's all I need that for right now. On the grass back here, I think I will use um, 045. I'm just going to fill that in pretty, pretty well. I'm going to keep looking back at my... Uh, my the first one I did my reference yeah because I also use some of this yellowy color which is 044 I feel like I'm a bingo announcer can I get an I-17 I-17 anyone I-17 there we go I don't know if that's the right number the only time I ever played bingo was like at the kids school I'm using this darker one it's a 057 Oh, 57. Does sound like bingo, doesn't it? <laughs> that would be zero. That would be just 57, actually. Derf. All right, I'm going to color the grass down here under our violets while I'm at it. And the grass back here, which I think there are more violets in, but you can't really see them that well, so let's just call it grass for now. All right, let's grab some grays and black. I've got a uh, black, which is 120, I've got, and I've got two grays, 113 and 114. How about that? All right. So we got a silo back here, and I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the this one, 114. I think it's a little darker. And I'm gonna go along the edges here. And then I'm gonna do the black right on the edge, kind of overlapping it. I'm gonna blend them together with a 113. I'm not coloring in the middle. We're working on cream, or I'm working on cream cardstock rather, and I'll put white right in the center, and then I can then it'll give me a nice, uh, nice shine. I'm adding some of this lighter gray onto the bottom of the clouds as well. Okay, I'll show you what I mean about the white. So here's the white. You have to be careful. Sometimes your white will pick up other colors. 
Okay, so I can just kind of blend that across to make it look a little, little shiny there. And then I can actually use this right in the clouds. Make them pop a little bit more. And we can go do the stone wall while we're at it. So you can go in with some of your blacks. Oops, I need to put a little grass in there. Put in your shadows with your blacks. I'm not a big fan of black usually, but for this tiny stamped image, I think it kind of really helps. Put in there that grass color first and foremost. There we go. And then I'm just going to fill in with the, with the grays. I'm not going to fuss with it too much. We're going to be blending this with uh, the Gamsol anyway, so I won't worry about it too much. Don't worry about anything. There, it's just a, just a piece of paper, right? Okay, so back to our chicken. Let's color the um, crown, the crow, whatever the heck you call that thing. The red, the wattle? Hmm, the crown and the wattle, I don't know. I'm not a very good chicken owner, I guess. I don't know what any of these things are called. I'm gonna throw a little bit of uh, red in here too. And I'm also going to paint my little uh, farmhouse back here red. Nothing like a cheerful red barn and farmhouse. There. That's cute. I think I'm going to put the roof of the silo red too. I don't know if it should be, but in my world it is. And you know what? I can go in here with this black and you know, I might want to sharpen this. This is the uh, Spectrum Noir sharpener, which um, is quite nice. I think that this would be handy in my kids' uh, backpacks too because it's so tiny it would fit in their binder. I like that Spectrum Noir. Um, you know, and I am happy with these. I know they've had some mixed reviews from people, but I think they do a good job at what they're supposed to do. And I'm really glad because because <laughs> I bought all of them when they were on sale at Consumer Crafts. I'm certainly glad they're decent. All right. I think I'm going to mix a little gray on that. I tend to leave my, my pencil tips kind of blunt, but when I'm working on something tiny like this, I do have to sharpen them. Oh, and I do notice that I forgot to do a little sky in here. Let's just fix that right now, shall we? And we need some other shades of green for these trees. We don't have to sharpen your pencil too much. If Like when I'm painting, I tend to like broad areas and um, so I don't sharpen things too much. So your pencils will last a lot longer if you don't have to sharpen them so much. Now while I have this dark green out, this is a uh, 60. Oh, 60, anyone? <laughs> I have a hard time not saying the yeah. well, I'm just going to go put my uh, shadows in some of these leaves with the underlapping ones and towards the centers of them. It's just nice to have a couple different shades on something. It just makes it look a little bit better. And look how quickly you can do this. You can obviously take your time, enjoy it, you know, spend as much time as you want when you're coloring. I am going to rush it because... Well, for one thing, I've got two kids waiting to go to the beach. And for another thing is, you know, I like to, I get very excited. I can't wait to see how it comes out. And then I'm going to layer over this with one of those lighter colors. I think this one, why not? These, um, this is a pretty smooth cardstock. So if you wanted to work longer on something, you might want uh, cardstock with more tooth, uh, cardstock that's a little bit rougher. Uh, Paper Tree Ink has a cardstock called Stampers Select, I believe. I only have it in white, but it's a really nice cardstock because it works really well with alcohol markers, but it's got a little bit of a tooth, so if you like to do like alcohol markers and then put color pencil on top, it's really ideal for that. Um, so it's a little bit rougher than this, um, than this, but it's definitely still smooth enough to stamp on, so you don't have to worry about it, you know, your stamp skipping over the uh, grooves in the paper. I would really recommend checking that out if you're looking for a really good um, good stamping card stock. I like that. I like this too, but sometimes you just want a little more tooth. And for our violets, I'm going to use two shades of purple. I've got um, 82 and 78. Yeah, I think you can go in with whatever one first. I'm just going to color it all with the uh, lighter one and then go in with the darker. And I apologize if the water pump starts up. I told the kids to get their water bottles ready, get their towels packed, put their bathing suits on so they'd be ready by the time I was done my... Uh, my tutorial here. Got a multitask. I'm multitasking mama. It's actually the last day of uh, summer vacation. They start school tomorrow, so it's like I really, you know, we gotta, we gotta get to the beach one more time. We gotta go swimming one more time. We gotta take our dog out. She's a water dog now. She needs to go for a swim. Of course, after the kids in school, I can take the dog out in the canoe. 
and now she'll go for that. I put her in a canoe a couple weeks ago, and she almost tipped me over. She was not impressed, uh, but maybe she'd get used to it. My neighbor swears that I'll be able to uh, to pick her up if she jumps out of the canoe. I don't know about that. We'll see, I guess. I think I missed another one. I'm always missing stuff here. <laughs> I'm coloring, coloring. All right, so now um, I want to do the chicken body. And, oh, you know what? I think I did use a little bit of that on the chicken body, too. It's a little bit richer of an ochre. I'm still in, still in focus. Oh, gosh, I hope I'm in focus. I'm going to add this in here. And then I'm going to go over the whole thing with this lighter color. I'm not going to press really firmly, though, because I know I'm going to want some white highlights, too. Put that in just like that. Oh, we're at 15 minutes. My goodness. I don't know if we're going to get this done in time. We might. Never know. And get the feet. All right. And then with the white, I'm going to throw in some, just some highlights in the middle. It's just going to make the body seem nice and plump. Nice plump rooster there. And we're going to go in with this dark green. Put the, uh, the tail. So I got a fancy rooster. Or a Rhode Island. We only have two Rhode Island reds left. We started off with six. Not a bad couple of years for chickens. Good year for foxes, though. They've made out quite well in the, uh, in the bargain. I'm adding a little purple here because it's going to kind of bring out the violets in the, uh, in the, uh, in the ground there. And we got some brown in here too because we did down a little bit. Okay, then we can start blending. And what I'm using here is just this Gamsol and uh, some paper stumps, which come kind of blunt if you get the Crafter's Companion ones, but you can um, rub them on a sandpaper block and then they come out, then they are much nicer. So I'm just going to go in very quickly. Actually, you just need to go in and blend with that. I don't want to uh, spend too much time on this because I want to get that card put together. So let me just show you the, uh, you know, this is just all you do. Just, you know, you just don't want to scribble over the whole thing. Stick to your one color and then change to a different stump and do like a different color. I think I can go from the green there to the green there because those colors are really close. Then I could dip and do all the browns. There's really not a lot to it. So what I want you to do is finish blending your image and then trim out your thing and you're going to have something like this. So let's zoom out and get this card put together before we run out of time here. Hope that was enough of a tutorial to uh, to teach you something. That's the aim of a tutorial, isn't it now, to teach you something? Alright, so now we've got this background piece there. I need my adhesive gun. Where did my adhesive gun go? It's over here! under an illustration of a hummingbird and a spool of fishing line, of course. You never know, folks. Some of that on there. Put this on our card. Do you hear the pitter-patter of excited children going to the, wanting to go to the beach? I love that. That's so fun. And I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of this. This is just a scrap of gingham paper. I think gingham and I think chickens, and I just think that's lovely. Reminds me of growing up in the country. My grandfather was a dairy farmer. That always reminds me of my grandmother's, grandma's, grandparents' house. They lived right across the field. When my mother got tired of my shenanigans, she'd say, "Go visit grandmother, Lindsay. I think I think your grandmother wants to see you." <laughs> She's like, "Oh my gosh, here comes that kid again. What is she? What she done today?" Oh, I just love chickens. My mother collects chickens. She has a chicken, little chicken figurines here and there. I actually had chicken and rooster pencil sharpeners when I was a kid, and my mom kept them. They're on her, like, little, she's a little, um, this little old-fashioned clock in her kitchen that's on the wall, and little chicken pencil sharpeners sitting out there. For <laughs> random information. I'm full of random stuff today, aren't I? All right, so in there, I'm going to put that on askew a little bit. So, again, check out my blog in a day or two. I'm going to have a giveaway of that rubber stamp plus a gift certificate to about our, well, artneco.com, formerly about art accents. Great, great stuff there. And um, there's our card. I think it's adorable. And look how easy it was to color it. So I'll just show you the difference between the blended all the way and not blended all the way one here. The sky gets a little bit smoother. You know, whether you want to blend it or not is completely up to you. You can also use baby oil. Um, I do notice with the Gamsol, if I blend with a Gamsol and then I, I want to go over it with more color, I can, whereas I can't with the baby oil. So that's just something to consider. Um, it has no odor. Baby oil smells like babies, which is kind of nice. But, um, you know, two ways to skin that cat, I guess. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, happy crafting.